Hello everybody and welcome back to Bookish Ramblings. Today's video is recent reads number five. Grab your coffee and snacks and let's get started. Let's just start things off by talking about the book of Ruth from the Bible. Now this was the Christian book club pick that we picked for the month of May to try to give you like a brief summary of the book of Ruth. Um, it starts out talking about this man. His name was um, Elimelech and his wife Naomi and their two sons and there was this really bad famine in the land and so they end up going to the land of Moab. The husband Elimelech ends up dying and so it's just Naomi and her two sons. Her two sons end up marrying Moabite women but then the two sons end up dying. So then it's just Naomi and her daughters-in-law. So Naomi decides eventually that it's just time for her to go back home. Her daughters-in-law go with her at first but on the way there she tries to convince them to like turn back to go back home like nothing for them where she's going and it would just be a hard life and one of the daughters-in-law does end up turning back and leaving but Ruth is determined to go with her and she will not leave her mother-in-law's side and she's like no where you go I will go your people will be my people and your God will be my God and I'm going with you I'm not leaving. Naomi ends up sending Ruth into the fields because it's like harvest season and so she sends her into this field to like collect grain any grain that's like left behind or dropped she can like gather and take and while she's there like the owner of the field his name is Boaz and he notices her and he goes out of his way to like help her and be nice to her and make sure she's like taken care of and everything. So Ruth tells Naomi about it and Naomi is like really excited because as it turns out Boaz is their kinsman redeemer. So what that is basically is the kinsman redeemer was someone who could like is was like a the closest family member that could like help them out in whatever way it was also their job like for example if this woman if her husband died it was like the dead man's brother's responsibility to then marry her and take care of her and everything like that was also part of being a kinsman redeemer so boaz was their kinsman redeemer so she comes up with this plan and she's like he has to redeem us and like marry you and all this stuff so she instructs ruth and like tells her what to do and to like go to boaz and what to say and everything and ruth does it and and Boaz agrees but he's like actually I'm not your closest like relative this other guy is so I need to go talk to him and see if he wants to redeem you if so great if not like I'll marry you and I will redeem the land that Naomi's selling and all this stuff so the other guy doesn't want to redeem them when he learns that part of that requirement is for him to marry Ruth I think because she's like Moabite and so he doesn't want to do that so Boaz does it and he marries Ruth and he redeems the family and they live happily ever after. They have a kid and everything. Ruth and Naomi lost like everything and they had nothing and then the way God like restores everything in the end and their you know faith and everything is just it's a good story and I've always really liked that one. It's always been one of my favorite books in the Bible. One of my biggest takeaways from the story is always the weird customs that they had back in the day like the whole like when Boaz is talking to the their other uh, close relative possible kinsman redeemer the whole like taking off the sandal thing and giving it to the guy and like making a deal and everything is like I know there's some kind of like symbolism behind that and there's a reason why they did that to like symbolize something I just have no idea what it is I'm sure it's in the Bible in the Old Testament somewhere and then the whole thing where Ruth goes to Boaz at the threshing floor and he's like sleeping and the whole thing of her like laying at his feet and everything I'm sure there's a that's supposed to be symbolic of something as well and I also have no idea what they do all of that stuff for it's like seems very awkward to me but they did things differently back then if you read the story you know what i'm talking about it's strange so that's one of my biggest thoughts when i read this book every time but the other one is the whole like somewhere else in the bible it talks about jesus being our kinsman redeemer and i never really had thought too much about that for most of my life i never really knew what it meant when it said that but when i did i just thought it was really really cool and really interesting. I'll just read you this thing really quick. Why is Jesus a kinsman redeemer? He fits this role for a number of reasons. First and most obvious, he redeems us. He pays our debts, marries us into the family of God, and restores us. In another way, he grafts us into the family of God. Ruth wasn't Jewish, but because of her marriage to Boaz, she gets to participate in the lineage of Jesus. 
In the same way, we get to become a part of God's family and he redeems us in every way, just like a perfect kinsman redeemer could. Jesus' lineage and how her and Boaz fit into it is listed in the last chapter of Ruth at the very end. And if I'm rem remembering right, I think Boaz was like the great grandfather of King David and then if you keep going, you eventually get to Jesus. So it's very interesting. If you read this book last month, uh, definitely let me know what your thoughts or takeaways of the story were. I would love to chat with you about it down in the comments. Moving on, I did read Husband Auditions by Angelou Ruth Strong. This is like a Christian rom-com. This is about this girl named Mary and she's really depressed because all of her friends have gotten married and she's the last single one and they have passed on like this little article that's like from the 50s or something like that that's like 101 ways to catch a husband and they've all been passing it around and now that she's the last single one, it has been bestowed to her. And she's very depressed and thinks also the article is, like, stupid. But her new roommate, one of them, is this guy named Kai. And he's, like, an aspiring, like, filmmaker or cameraman or something. And he convinces her to try to do the things on the list and he'll film it. And they're going to post it online. And he's hoping to, like, get noticed by doing this. And so she reluctantly agrees. And it makes for some really funny situations. And I just thought this book was so funny. I was laughing so much. It was so entertaining and so cute. I really like the romance. I like the characters. Definitely one of my favorite uh, Christian like rom-coms ever. I loved it so much. I gave it five stars. Then I read Echoes Among the Stones by Jamie Jo Wright. This is like Christian romantic suspense. Uh, it's dual timeline. Some of the chapters are from one girl's perspective from like the f f 40s, 50s? And then the other chapters are this other girl's perspective and it's set in modern day. So in the past timeline, this girl finds her sister's body. She's been like brutally murdered. And so the past timeline is her trying to figure out like who killed her sister and everything. And then in the modern timeline, there's this girl who her grandmother, who she does like does not have a good relationship with and she hasn't spoken to in years, has like asked her to come home. And then she also like for her job, she has to go to this town anyway, because I'm still a little bit confused as to what exactly her job was and what she was like meant to be doing. But it had something to do with like this cemetery and it was all like flooded and stuff and she needed to like figure out the unmarked graves and like organize the records and things. I don't know. But she's working with like this British guy. They're working together to do this. And she finds the grave of the dead girl from the past timeline, Hazel Grayson. And she realizes that the murder was never solved and it has something to do with her grandmother and her grandmother is keeping secrets. And so she then also starts trying to figure out who Hazel Grayson was and what happened to her. So it's really, I wouldn't say it was a suspense. It wasn't sus suspenseful at all. It was really just like a mystery. Um, it was interesting, but it was not my favorite book by this author. I would say it's probably my least favorite so far, even though I hate to say it. I also find it found it like a little bit depressing, especially like the past timeline was very depressing and things didn't end how I wanted them to end. So it was just like not my favorite and it wasn't as like exciting as this author's books usually are for me. But again, it was good. It just wasn't like great. So I gave it three and a half stars. I read Fugitive by Chris Bradford. This is the last book in the Bodyguard series. This is like a secular like YA about this kid who in the first book he's like recruited to be in this uh, special bodyguard program called Bodyguard where like young people are guarding other young people. So all the books are him guarding kids on like different assignments and everything. This one was a little bit different because instead of him guarding a kid, he comes home from an assignment and finds that the headquarters has been like attacked and his friends are missing. And so him and one other bodyguard kid, they go to China trying to track down their friends and they're also running from like these bad guys that are like trying to kill them and everything. Um, so it was a little bit different, but I actually liked this one a lot. I liked the whole series except for one book, which I've talked about. Do you not recommend Target at all? But the other ones were good, but this one was definitely my favorite in the series. I gave it, I think I gave this one five stars. This one also had like the least 
uh, like negative content in it. So all the books have like a little bit of language, but none of it is too over the top. Again, except for Target, that book was terrible in multiple ways. But this one had like the least amount of language out of all the books, which, which I really appreciated. Then I read The River Between by Jacqueline Cook, and my buddy read this with a friend of mine. She's not on booktube, but this is book one in the the river series i can't remember the name of the series and this is like historical christian romance and it's about this girl i'm not sure exactly of the setting i feel like i did know and now i forgot but this girl her mom is trying to get her to marry this certain guy who comes from a really important family it's like her cousin and everything and so she invites the guy and she's trying to get her daughter to marry him and pressuring her to marry him but this girl ends up meeting like a riverboat captain and she really likes him but her parents are very much against it it's like kind of a forbidden lover kind of thing and this girl trying to like honor and obey her parents but at the same time like do what she feels like god is leading her to do i felt like the romance kind of moved a bit too fast for me. It was entertaining for like what it was, but it wasn't like a fantastic story or anything. I gave it three out of five stars. I did read The Dream by J.L. Knight. It's a short story, okay? There's like four chapters. It is so short, but it's kind of like a what if sort of story that the author did because someone gave her the idea. Basically, it's a like, what if Jace, which is the main character from like the Ilion Chronicle series, what if he was able to like, go back in time and meet like his younger self like what would they what would be said what would he think what would that be like so that's what this story is and it's called the dream like i said it's a short story there's not much to it but it's just wonderful to be back in the Ilion world with our favorite characters that we love it was also like so sad and like i almost cried i almost cried but it was good i don't really know how to rate it i guess i would give it like we'll say like four four and a half stars. Then I started reading the Restorer series by Sharon Hink. This is a Christian fantasy series. This has been on my TBR for quite a while and I found the ebook of it. Um, oh, this is the Sword of Lyric series. Book one is called The Restorer. So I wasn't quite sure what I was going to think of this at first. It's about this woman named Susan and she is like this typical like soccer mom she's a wife she has four kids just living the average life you know stuck in a rut a little bit frustrated with life she wants adventure she wants purpose and she's feeling like not really knowing what to do with her life at this point some stuff happens and she gets transported to like this alternate like universe in this world they have like this religion and faith that is basically a parallel of like christianity but God in this world is just called like the one. Um, and they also have the verses, which are like our scripture. And according to the verses, it says that in a time of great need, the one will send a restorer to her turn the hearts of the people back to the verses. This guy is telling her like he thinks she's the restorer. So that's what this book is about. And it was actually, I enjoyed it a lot more than I was expecting to enjoy it. Um, there were some plot twists and some twists at the end, and it was very interesting, and it was it was a fun time. So I gave this one a uh, 4 out of 5 stars. I read book 2 called The Restorer's Son, and then I read book 3, which was The Restorer's Journey. I gave book 2 4 out of 5 stars as well. I really liked uh, the main character in book 2. I'm not going to like say who it is because I don't want to like give spoilers for book 1, but I really liked the main character in book 2. I just didn't like that that character was also like it was their point of view and Susan's point of view from book one because once it moved on from her and we were in book two I was like I don't really care what she's doing anymore go away I'm more interested in this other character now book three I was at first I thought I was really gonna like it because of the new like main character that I thought it was gonna be about but I found a lot of situations and characters really frustrating in book three and everyone was being so mean and like it was just I was stressed a lot and really frustrated and I wanted to shake some people and scream at them because I was so frustrated. It had some other interesting parts but the frustration I just couldn't handle it so I only gave this one three out of five stars. I definitely will there's one more book called The Deliverer and I will read it eventually but it's not available on ebook yet um so I can't get it right now but it should be available in like a couple days actually. I've been reading these on Scribd. Then I read Oath of the Brotherhood by C.E. Lorano if I'm saying her name right I don't think that's it. Loriano. Uh this is the Song of Seer. I don't think that's how you say that. How do you pronounce? This has a pronunciation guide uh at the back which is beyond helpful because the names in this book were killing me. 
killing me. Shara, the song of Shara. So I'm gonna just read you the back summary because I can't get my thoughts together enough to give you a summary of this. So this is Christian YA, by the way. An island at the edge of the world, an ancient prophecy, a reclusive warrior brotherhood. When evil encroaches, who will find the faith to fight it? To his clan, Connor McNear is a disappointment, gifted with a harp, but hopeless with a sword. To the beautiful young healer Anya, he's one whose gift calls out to her own and captures her heart. To the reclusive warrior brotherhood called the Firene, he may be the answer to an ancient prophecy, if he can be trained to fight. Can Connor and Anya find their true path as an ancient evil engulfs the Isle of Shara? Must Connor sacrifice everything he loves, even Anya, to follow the path God lays out before him? I found parts of it slightly boring. But overall, like, it was interesting and I did like it. Again, the names and pronunciations. So many words were pronounced totally opposite of how they were spelled. So, and it was very hard to remember. So, like, certain characters, I would forget how to say their name, like, every few pages and have to look it up again. Because it looked nothing like it was spelled and it was driving me insane. At first, like, I did plan to continue the series, but the longer I've sat with this, the more I'm thinking I'm probably, because I, I gave it four, four out of five stars, but I'm kind of thinking I might change it to, like, three stars, and I don't think I really care to continue this series anymore, the longer I've kind of let it sit with me. I just, like, don't really care what happens next. Like, I know a lot of people that like this series. If you like Christian fantasy, I would still say, like, give it a try. Like, it was interesting, but, like, I think I just have so many other things that I've been reading and that I liked better and other stuff like I want to read that I think I will like better than this. So I'm kind of just like, I think I'm just kind of done with it. I read Radiant by Ashley Bustamante. This is book two in the Color Theory series. Um, this one just released recently and look at the cover. It's so beautiful. I talked about the first book, Vivid, in my prior recent reads video. I will link it up here if you missed it and you want to hear about that book. Starting out, we're introduced to a lot of new characters. So there's a lot of new names that you kind of have to like get adjusted to and learn who people are. Our main character, Ava, I found her very annoying for about the first half of this book. She didn't bother me in the first book. But this one, I she was just acting so, like, needy, so immature, and it was just very frustrating. And there's kind of some jealousy with, like, over this boy with this other girl in this book, and I just am never a fan of that. I found it very frustrating. But yeah, Ava was, like, driving me insane for the first half of this book. Um, after that, things, like, got better, and she started acting, like, rational again, but... Oh, she was very annoying. Elm was fabulous. He was the same as in book one. I still loved him so much in this book, and he is so funny. I love his personality. He's great. So, I didn't love this one as much as Vivid. I gave this one four out of five stars, but it was still good, and I'm really looking forward to reading book three when it eventually releases. Highly recommend this series. It is a fantasy. It's labeled as, like, Christian fantasy, but for the first two books, I have not seen anything that represents Christianity or Christian faith or anything, um, unless I'm missing something, correct me if I'm wrong. So I'm calling this series, for now at least, um, just a clean fantasy. But yeah, it has like color magic and it's very fun, very entertaining. I like it a lot. Then let's talk about Cowler by J.J. Fisher. This book is book one in the Nightingale trilogy. Okay, first of all, look at this cover. It is so beautiful, and it's actually, like, more beautiful in person. Um, the picture didn't quite do it justice. Like, there's so much detail in the cover that I couldn't tell from a picture, and it's just so pretty, and I love it so much. So, yes, this is fantasy. This is set in a world where people have, uh, like, different gifts. It's supposed to be, like, at first I thought it was, like, dystopian, but it's not. It's, like, a fantasy world. But in this fantasy world, like, the apocalypse has come. And it's, like, 60 years later or so. Something happened, like, during this apocalyptic event. Gave certain people gifts and, like, abilities. Our main character, Stephanie Winter. What is this inspired by? It's supposed to be inspired by, like, Hades and Persephone's story and also The Nightingale by some famous classic author. I don't know. Anyway, this girl, Stephanie, her ability, she's called a mem, and she has the ability to, like, go into people's memories when she, like, touches them. 
and she can see their memories, she can suppress memories and numb them to make people forget things. Um, she can extract memories and give memories to other people. She is an orphan and a slave and her master like uses her gift for his own profit and everything. And she's seen some, some things, okay. She is approached by this man named Lord Adamo and he wants to like hire her to help him find like this ancient relic that is supposed to like be able to alter memories or erase them permanently because he also has some own trauma from his past and things that he wants desperately to forget forever and he's hoping that between this relic and Stephanie's abilities that those memories can be permanently erased from his mind and Stephanie is also hoping that finding this thing can help recover some of her own memories about like her family and stuff so she agrees and like they run away yeah I don't know what else to say but it was really good um look at this map it is like so pretty I like it a lot isn't it so cute I love it so much it's such a good map it's so pretty this was really good I gave it four out of five stars. I feel like the next book will be even better because you only got so far in the journey in this book and I was getting to know the characters and I feel like things are just getting going. So I feel like the next book and then the next book are just going to keep getting better and better as I get more attached to the characters and we go further into the journey and to see what happens next and where they go and I just like can't wait to see what happens next. So I feel like it's just gonna get better from here. And this was already really great. It was just really unique. I loved the different abilities. Like there's this one guy who, I forget the name of like what he is, but his gift is like reveals if people are telling the truth or lying. And he's like not able to like turn his gift off. So it's like always on. So when he talks to people, it lets everyone around them know like if the person just lied or told the truth or anything. So that's like, it's just really cool. Cannot wait for the next book. I'm so excited. This is by Enclave Publishing, but there wasn't any like Christian themes that I could detect or anything, so I would just say this is a clean fantasy. But yeah, it was really good and I would highly recommend. And I think the last two books I have to talk about are actually DNFs. I wanted to start with these and then I forgot, so I'm ending on like kind of a sad note, but that's okay. I talked about a lot of really good books today. One of them is Borders of the Heart by Chris Fabry. Uh, I got about like 50, 55 ish pages in before I decided to DNF because I was so bored. This is contemporary Christian romance and this guy finds this woman like half dead in the Arizona desert. She's crossed over illegally from Mexico, he believes. He tries to help her and everything and figure out because she's like running from these evil men. So he gets caught up in that drama and she won't tell him what's going on or who these men are or why she's running. But yeah, I just wasn't a fan. I was very bored and I just really didn't care about what happened next. So I DNF'd it. And then my next enough is Tawn by L.A. Kelly. This is a Christian medieval fantasy and it's book one in a series. And this has been on my TBR for years and I found the ebook and so I decided to give it a try and I was really excited. The plot was really interesting. So it starts out this opening scene where this like assassin is like climbing into this castle and is like kidnapping this woman. He's supposed to turn her over to like his evil like master that he works for and everything but he like doesn't want to live that life anymore and so his plan is actually to like kidnap her in order to save her and then he's also going to go back and save all of these other uh little assassins in training of these kids that he wants to get away from that life and everything and i was like obviously this is something that i need to read because i love an assassin turned good guy and it's medieval but i unfortunately i did not like the way it was written i thought the writing felt very like stiff and just like robotic and i just could not get into the writing so unfortunately i dnf'd it on page 63 and that is everything i am done i got through this video it started out a little rough i was having a hard time explaining things but i got through it and it feels good thank you guys so much for watching this video i hope you enjoyed it if you've read any of the books that i talked about today let me know your thoughts let me know what you've been reading lately uh the good the bad everything in between i'd love to chat books in the comments and i will see you in the next bookish ramblings video bye